Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Inc. And today I got a short video for you on passing arrays to functions. Passing arrays to functions. Okay, so we can uh, pass an array as an argument to a function, similar to how um, you can pass an integer variable or a um, string variable. You can pass arrays. Okay, so to explain how this is going to work, we need to go through a few things here. Um, the first few things are the most important for this, the syntax for the parameters. So when you set up a function to be able to accept an array as an argument, there's a particular syntax you're going to need to use, and we're just going to reuse square brackets. Okay, it's going to be pretty straightforward. And the syntax for passing an array as an argument, right? So this is straightforward too. It's going to look just like exactly like you would if you were going to be passing an integer or a float or a character it's just the name of the array that's all people when they're first learning to do this sometimes they get confused and they're like oh my gosh it's an array i don't know what to do um, i didn't you know read the text or i didn't what, 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 what ah. and so they just automatically default to well it's an array it must use square brackets right wrong right the way you do it is just pass the name of the array that's it Okay, and then I'm going to have a couple other little minor details for you. Uh, one of those is going to be that the arrays themselves are always passed by reference. They're passed by reference. So what does that mean? Anything you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. So functions can change or can modify the array arguments that are passed to them. Okay, so let's look at a coding example. So we'll start off by writing a function that can print out the contents of an array, right? So I'll use a prototype for this. Return type will be void because the function is not going to return anything. I'll call the function print, and the function is going to need to have two parameters, right? So this function is going to accept an integer array as an argument and a, another integer, which is going to be the size of the array as its second argument, right? So with this prototype right here, you look at it and you go, oh, well, I got two int data types in my, in my uh, parameter list, right? Well, that's not good enough because if you just leave it as is, this is a function that's going to accept two integers as arguments, not any arrays, right? So to specify that this first argument is going to be an array of integers, we use uh, square brackets, right? So we borrow the square back brackets from that array notation and use it here. So now this is saying that this function is going to accept a single array of integers as its first argument and a uh, single integer argument uh, as its second argument, okay? So two total arguments, an array of integers and a integer, right? So now when we go to define this function, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna name our parameters Okay, as you usually do. So for the second parameter, I'll name it size. Okay, and for the first parameter, I'll name it um, you know, R for array. Okay, now the uh, square brackets has to stay, but it comes after the parameter name. Okay, now once we've done that, the function now has a link to the array argument, and the function also knows how many elements the array is going to have. So I want this function to be able to work with uh, an array of any length. I want it to be able to print out an integer array no matter how many elements it has. So I got to tell the function, well, here's how many elements there are, right? Arrays are dumb. You can't ask them. They don't have member functions. You can't do like dot size like you can with a string or a vector. So you have to um, include with that array argument how big it is, okay? So that allows you then to create a loop, for example, where you use size as uh, the, or as part of the test expression here, right? So now the number of repetitions is gonna be controlled by that size parameter, right? And the size parameter is gonna get its value from the argument that's passed to it, okay? So don't make the, rookie mistake or, or you know, the mistake that a lot of new students make and say, oh, we'll have to print out an array of uh, 
three elements. I don't know why he rambled on about that size parameter. I'll just type three in here. They'll give me my three repetitions, right? Don't make that mistake. It's an easy mistake to make. Tons of people, new people do it. Sees new students to make that mistake all the time. Okay, if you do that, then this loop is going to iterate. It's going to repeat exactly three times all the time, right? Which works great if you want to print out an array that has three integers in it. But what if you pass an array that only has two integers in it? It's only got two elements. What if you pass in an array that has 27? Well, then you're SOL because either you're not going to print out enough elements or you're going to print past the end of the array. Use the size parameter to control your loops. That's what it's there for. Okay, so C out R of I. And then I'll put a space in between the different values that we're, that we're going to be printing out through the uh, between the different uh, elements of the array. And then after the loop is done, I'll, I'll move the cursor to the next line. Okay, so let's try this function out. So I'll create um, an array that um, is going to be, I don't know, four elements long. I'll use the name constant for that. And I'll call the integer array A. Okay, got nothing else to do with it. Got nothing, else, nothing better to think of here. So um, I'll initialize it with an initialization list. Okay, and then I'll pass that array along with its size, as indicated by max, to the print function. Now, when you pass an array as an argument to a function, you pass it just like you would any other variable. You just pass the name. So I'll pass the name as an argument. You know, sometimes new, people are new to doing this, working with arrays, passing arrays, new students, whatever, they forget, they didn't read their text, they're not paying attention, whatever. They're like, oh my God, it's an array. I guess I have to include square brackets. No, you don't. It's just the name. It is just the name. Let me say it a third time. It is just the name, okay? So that second argument is going to be the number of elements. Now I could have hard, -court, uh, hard coded in four here, but if I use the name constant, then um, anytime I change the name constant here, you know, then it's going to update into the function call as well. So that's a, that's a good programming practice. Okay. So now when we call the print function, what's going to happen is, is that R and A are linked to each other. Arrays are passed by reference. So anything that you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. So in the function, when we actually say C out R of I, what we're really saying is C out A of I, right? And since four was passed into size, um, this loop is gonna repeat four times and it's gonna go through and display A of zero, A of one, A of two, A of three, okay? So let's go ahead and run it and test it just to make sure that it works. You should see eight, six, seven, five on the screen. And we, in fact, do see that. Okay, so let me give you another example of, you know, this whole pass by reference idea. So let's go ahead and create a function that will change the contents of the array, maybe zero out the array. So uh, I'll use a void return type, so the function won't return anything. And uh, when we will name the function zero out array, right? And I'll pass to it an array of integers and also the size of the array as its only arguments. Let's go down here to find the function. In this case, I'll name the parameter cat and uh, the uh, second parameter I'll name size. I'll just you know, go with the same, same name because that's what it's doing. Um, I'm going to go through, create another loop using size to control how many repetitions I have right, for reasons I just explained. And then I'm going to go through and assign the cat of I uh, zero. Okay. Now remember, arrays are passed by reference. So when I say cat of I equals zero, what I'm really doing is let me call let me put in my call here zero out array a max. When I say cat of I equals zero, what's really happening is a of i equals zero. With pass by reference, whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument, okay? So I'll call that zero out array function, 
and then immediately after that we'll call the print function again so we can see the changes okay so there's the 8675 from the line 13 call to print and then line 15 zero out array happened which changed all of the elements to zero and so the line 17 call to print shows us that in fact um, array has been updated okay arrays are passed by reference there's no other way to pass an array uh, as an argument to a function that's just the way they work in C++ okay okay so let me show you one more thing here and that is that you can pass individual elements of an array as an argument okay so this is going to require slightly different syntax if you're passing an entire array as an argument then yeah you just pass the name and that's it just the name you know don't pass don't use any other syntax just the name just the name right if I want to pass an individual element though I will need some additional syntax so let me just create a simple function called printit that's going to accept a single integer as an argument okay so it's only accepting an integer as an argument. There's no square brackets here. Even though I'm gonna pass an element as an argument to this function to show you that you can do it, this thing is still just accepting a single integer because the elements of my array A are integers, okay? So let's define this function and all we'll have it do is we'll just have it print the argument that's passed to it, right? So we'll just have a C out statement that prints out the parameter okay so if I go and I call that function right, say um, oops sorry print it and I pass it a uh, literal 99 right I can pass any type of integer I want literal uh, an integer variable um, and you know well, you'll see you know the, the 99 there it is Okay, because I passed 99, that 99 was copied into I, C out I, 99, okay? But now I can also pass, as an argument, an individual element of the array. And like I was saying, this is gonna require a slightly different syntax. You can't just pass the name of the array. The parameter isn't set up for that in the printed function. It accepts an integer, not an array of integers. There's no square brackets there. So if I'm going to pass one of the integers in the array, one of the elements in the array as an argument, I have to specify which one. So let's say that I want to pass the third element. So I want to pass seven as an argument to print it. Well then, now yes, I am going to use that array notation again to specify which element within that array that I want to pass as an argument to the printed function. Okay. So let's go ahead and run it, and you'll see that we see um, after the 99, we see the 7 there, right? Because when we passed a of 2, well, what's a of 2? That's the element that has the 7 inside of it. So there's um, the 7 as a result of line 17, okay? Now, for my printed function, I had set it up originally to uh, pass by value so we got an example of that but you can also pass individual elements by reference so this will be the last thing that I show you for this video uh, and how can I do this well let's create a function called you know change it okay and I'll pass an integer by reference and then I'll pass another integer just by value so the idea is going to be that the second argument is going to be used to change the first argument that's what's gonna that's how change it's gonna work so let's call or let's define change it right let me make sure your name is right right okay so first parameter is gonna be passed by reference second one's gonna be passed by value and all we're gonna do is assign to the first parameter the second so what that's gonna do is it's gonna overwrite the contents of the first argument with the contents of the second that's all that that's gonna do so um, let's go ahead and uh, see how that would work with just a regular old variable. So let's say x equals nine, right? And then we'll call printit x. Okay, now when I do that, 
you're going to see 9, right? Uh, there's the 9. And because what we're doing, just go on print, copying that uh, x, the contents of x into that uh, parameter i, right? Now, if I was to call change it, and I passed x as an argument, and I passed 3 as an argument, then according to change it, the 3 gets copied into b, and since we passed by reference, um, a is the parameter that's linked to x, and so, oops, to x up here. And so, remember what you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. So that's gonna change the contents of x. So let's go ahead and run this. And you're gonna see that instead of seeing nine as the output, we see three because passed by reference. We changed the contents of x from nine to three by using that assignment statement inside the change it function. Okay, now what I wanted to show you was that, you know, that's that's kind of review from earlier sum of functions, but what I wanted to show you and remind you was that, you know, you can pass individual elements by reference as well, individual elements or arrays. So I could say um, A of 2, right? So A of 2 right now has got 7 in it, okay? But if I pass A of 2 and that 3 and then print A of 2 again, right, you're going to see that that 7 is going to have it's going to have changed okay so let's go ahead and print it out and so you can see that there is uh, my th the three right so let's walk through this change it a of two to three so a of two was seven right there's the seven but then when i call change it that assignment statement took the three that was passed as an argument and then assign that to A, but since it's passed by reference, what that really means is it assigned it to A of 2. So that way when we printed A of 2, we didn't see 7 because we changed the 7 to 3. And so we see 3 up here. And so when we get down to where it says uh, print A of max on line 30, look at the output of the print function, 8635, not 8675, 8635, because I changed the element using the change it function and that worked because I passed the element that third element of array a by reference okay so that's going to bring this video to a close if you felt that the video was useful please consider giving the video a thumbs up and if you thought that the video sucked well then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well if you'd like to see more videos if you're interested in more content from the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button and as usual if you're a student of mine and you have further questions feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours okay thanks for watching and we'll see you next time